All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Ephraim. Today's date is December 1st, 2022. And if you're listening to the sound of my voice, that means you were blessed to see another day. And for that, all praise, honor, and glory is due to the Most High God of Israel for now and forever. All right, man, we're running up on the, I mean, pretty much the end of the year, man. Where's the time went, right? Um, you know, as usual, you know, I want to thank and welcome all my new uh, subscribers, um, you know, and appreciate you all for, for continuing to like uh, the videos and commenting. You know, it all helps in the, in the viewership and um, I try to engage uh, as much as I can, you know, on, on my part as well. You know, um, still getting some some uh, stragglers of people just you know coming on my channel, making dumb comments don't know me from a can of paint just just saying stupid stuff and you know i try not to I, I just you know try to keep it moving and not give it no energy man but sometimes you know really it, it, it irks my nerves i'm older now and i've noticed that since i've gotten older things things tend to irritate me or irk me a lot quicker you know but 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 thankfully for the for the internet you know i don't have to i don't have to you know give it any energy you know what i'm saying so you know i can delete and block them or whatever and keep it moving and go on about my day you know but um you know it gets a little it's a little annoying at times, but but I want to I want to take this time to 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 give all the props and the you know to to you all you know what I'm saying the ones who 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 just you know just joined or who's been with me for a while going on eight years man can you believe that man eight years uh, I'm working on the book uh, the book is more than half done uh, I'm looking to have that out sometime uh, the first of uh, first of next year um, I, I don't know I'm, I'm kind of contemplating should I do a um, should I do like a movie with, with like a soundtrack? I mean, I'm just kind of, you know, you know, going through some ideas right now. I don't really know at this point, but I'm, I'll definitely keep y'all informed on that. But um, I think that's kind of the next the next step and the next level for Dr. Ephraim. You know, um, by grace and mercy, the most high, you know, coming out with the E1B1A back in January of 2015. I want to thank all of you. And there's people on Facebook. I don't know who they are, but they started some E1B1A um you know, pages and stuff, and they, you know, tagging me and, 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 you know, posting the videos from the page. And, you know, thank you for that. You know, keep, you know, keep posting, you know, whatever, whatever one, one of my videos you all want to post, by all means, post it. You know, just like I said, just, just tag me, make sure it's, it's from, it's from the page so they can click on it and, you know, you know, whatever the case may be. And I appreciate that, you know, because I was, I was starting to wonder, like, where are all the, the E1B1A disciples? Where, you know, I, I sh this should be E1B1A pages. You know, all over the internet. You know, so I, I've seen that. I'm starting, starting to see it more. So, you know, I want to encourage you all. If you have an E1B1A thing going on with Doctor Ephraim, and, and and essentially you're doing your your thing as a um as a disciple, as a as a student of mine. You know, by all means, and I appreciate that. Let's get let's get the word out there to our people. You know, I don't care about that. You can you can repost any one of my videos you want. You know, do you know I'm I'm cool with that. You know, my thing is just people you know taking my stuff and stealing my stuff without giving me you know proper credit. That's the stuff I had a problem with, but not the information. By all means, you can share my video in its entirety. So I'm, I don't care about that. So I want to thank you all for that, and let's continue to do that. Um, so today, uh, what I want to do, like I said, I want to I want to give some shine to things that rarely get any shine or any light. You know, um, and. A lot of people don't know that there was actually a um, a black man, one man, one sole sole black man, on the Titanic. Uh, and the reason why I've always been so so intrigued with the Titanic, but I mean, obviously it was it was a it was a big disaster. You know, a lot of people drowned. You know, a lot of people were saved, but a lot of people drowned. Man, I, I just couldn't imagine being on that boat, man, with the idea of knowing that basically you're gonna die, man. That 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 just does something to me, man. Like you know, and and for a while I, I had no idea there was a black man. Uh, on that on that ship because he never gets any props or any mention or whatever he he had a um uh a wife and and, and two little girls who was with him his wife was a french woman and um so yeah you know uh i don't know if many of you may or may not have heard of this brother but his name was joseph laroche uh he was haitian and i think he had i think he's kind of haitian and he kind of grew up in france a little bit but we're going to get into his story man and you know he so so many times throughout history you know, as black people, we know we're invisible. You know, people, they, they, they're not quick to, you know, to tell our stories or to say we was a part of something, even in disaster. I mean, which is crazy to me, you know, because I mean, I had no idea there was a, there was one lone black man on the Titanic. But, um, to, today we're going to give him a name and, and give him a little shine, man, as people in his, his, um, 
and, and you know, and, and may God, you know, bless and keep his ancestors, his daughters. And he had he had a, a one son because his wife was pregnant during the Titanic, and um, all of them are dead. I think the last one died. Uh, I think like in nineteen, his daughter died in nineteen ninety eight. You know, something like that. But anyway, let's get into it. Let's give this brother some some shine and some props. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, until next time, this is Doctor E from signing off, saying Shalom, elect. All right, and here we go. And shout out the source for this particular article was by Miss Brandy Course. And the date is April 14, 2016. So shout out and props to that sister uh, for this article. Um, got Mr. Roach on it looking like Michael from Good Times. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, wow, they might, they, might, they might be related. You never know. You look like Michael from Good Times on this picture. But, um, it says the story of Mr. Joseph LaRoche is one that has until relatively recently been largely forgotten in Titanic memory and discourse. The lingering question concerns why this is the case. Well, we all know our, our lives never really mattered in, in anything, even in tragedy. Right. Let's just be real. Let's be honest. You would think that seeing a black man walking the decks of the ship with a white woman and their offspring would make a lasting impression on Titanic's passengers particularly the first and second class passengers, but little mention is made of LaRoche or his family. It was only in the year 2000 that his story rose to prominence as a result of a, of a Titanic exhibit in Chicago. This oversight helps explain the prevalence of the mythical shine in African-American memory instead of LaRoche. LaRoche was born in Cap Haitian, Haiti on May 26, 1889 to a prominent Haitian family. His uncle, De Leslie's M. Sinaticus Leconte, was the president of Haiti from July 1911 until August 1912, when he died in an explosion. Mr. LaRoche left Haiti at the age of 15 to study engineering in France. While he was there, he met Juliette Lafargue, who lived in Villef, a nearby town. The two married in March 1908. After he earned his engineering degree, Mr. LaRoche was unable to find suitable employment in France because of his skin color. Wow. I mean, just that, that one line right there. This is, so this has been going on since the beginning. I mean, it's, you know, us being underemployed and, and, and it's nothing new. I mean, anyway, LaRoche had a wife and two young daughters that he wanted to support on his own without the help of his father-in-law. Shortly after he learned that Juliet was expecting a third child, LaRoche decided that he should return to Haiti with his family while his wife was still able to travel. Initially, the family was to travel on the French linear La France. However, the liners, the liners, I'm sorry, the liners strict policy required children to remain in the ship's nursery during meal times, which didn't appeal to the LaRoches. They exchanged their first class tickets for second class tickets on the Titanic. And that sealed the brother's fate right there. Unbeknownst to him, obviously. The family boarded the ship at Cherbourg, France, on the evening of Wednesday, April 10th. In her article about the LaRoches, quote, What happened to the only black family on the Titanic? Zander Hughes asserted that race was an issue aboard the ship and that the LaRoches' presence elicited insults and crude behavior directed at them by crew members and fellow passengers. Hughes was not alone in her assertions. A press release that appeared in the Philadelphia Inquirer about an exhibit featuring the LaRoches stated that racism was rampant on the ship and the family had to endure derogatory comments and behavior. However, a letter that Juliet wrote to her father while the Titanic was at Queenstown, Ireland, paints a different picture. She did not mention any racially motivated incidents directed at her or her family. In fact, she wrote that they had become acquainted with another French family whom they had traveled from Paris with on the train and dined with on board the ship. She also wrote that the people on board are very nice, quote, end quote. It should be kept in mind, however, that when Juliette LaRoche wrote her letter, she and her family had been aboard the ship for less than 24 hours. They would spend four, hour, four more days at sea, plenty of time to experience the conditions outlined by Hughes and the Enquirer. Hmm. Little has been written about the LaRoches and survivor accounts of the sinking, which isn't surprising. Nowhere in the 1912 press descri descriptions of the ship and the interviews with the survivors was the presence of a black family among the passengers never uh, ever mentioned. In fact, 
This information has come to light only relatively recently through the efforts of French researcher Olivier Mendez. It seems really strange once you take into account how eager surviving passengers and crew were to, were to disparage other ethnic groups. It became such a problem that the White Star Line was forced to apologize for derogatory statements made by Titanic's crew about Italians, a generic term for all the darker skinned passengers, and their behavior during the last moments of the dying ship. The only mentions of Simone and Louise LaRoche, Joseph and Juliet's daughters, was made by Kate Buss in a letter home. Quote, there are two of the finest little Japanese baby girls, <laughs> about three or four years old, who look like dolls running about, she wrote. On Sunday night, a passengers, uh, as passengers became aware of the ship's peril, Joseph, who spoke fluent English, learned of the ship's condition and quickly placed his family in a lifeboat. LaRoche is believed to have perished and his body was never recovered. Juliet and her children completed the trip to New York aboard the Carpathia. Once there, Juliet decided to return to France with her daughters on a French liner and she moved back into her father's house in Vallouf. She gave birth to her and Joseph's third child, a son, in December of 1912. After suing the White Star Line for damages, Juliet was awarded 150,000 francs in 1918. She used the money to open a fabric dyeing business to support her family, which had lived in poverty throughout the First World War. Neither Juliet nor her daughters devoted much effort to speaking publicly about the event. Juliet, Juliet only discussed it with a handful of close friends, and her daughters followed suit for the better part of a century. According to the, to the, to the Titanic Historical Society, Louise LaRoche was a member of the organization from its beginning in 1963 until her death in 1998. Despite LaRoche's membership, however, communication between her and the organization was thin due to a language barrier. She only spoke French. The silence was finally broken when Oliver Mendez, who was fluent in French and is also a THS member, visited LaRoche at her home in France. The story of that meeting and ultimately of the LaRoche's passage aboard the Titanic appeared in the Titanic commuted, uh, Commutator, THS's periodical in 1995. Since Mendez's meeting with Louise LaRoche, LaRoche's story has begun uh, gaining notoriety. Judith Geller's book, Women and Children First, as well as a traveling Titanic exhibit featuring the LaRoches, took giant steps toward publicizing their story. The sinking of the Titanic was a tragedy, without a doubt. 1,500 people died when it was within the technological means of the day to save them. Titanic was traditionally been, has, was traditionally been judged to be historically insignificant, important only to enthusiasts and buffs. Wow. Utilize, utilizing traditional barometers of historical value, such as economics and politics, the conclusion that the Titanic disaster is insignificant is valid. However, if the event is viewed from a different perspective, one that takes into account the cultural ramifications of the ship and the sinking, Titanic appears to be far from insignificant, and many new avenues of the study, of study and research present themselves. Okay, and the, <clears throat> excuse me, the source for this uh, article is Mr. Jordan Thompson from the griot.com. Uh, and he says, the LaRoches boarded the Titanic on April 10th, 1912 at Cherbourg. Over the next three days, they likely enjoyed several amenities afforded to second class passengers, luxurious staterooms, a dining salon, library, and three outdoor promenade decks, promenade decks. In a letter addressed to her father and sent from Titanic's final stop of Queenstown, now in Coba, Ireland, Juliette LaRoche wrote of the Titanic's luxury and friendly fellow travelers. The arrangements can, could uh, not be more comfortable. We have two bunks in our cabin and the two babies sleep on a sofa that uh, converts into a bed. One is at the head, the other at the bottom. A board put before them uh, prevents them from falling. There as well, if not better, than in their beds. <clears throat> at the moment, they are strolling on the in, in close, I'm sorry, they are strolling on the enclosed deck with Joseph, Louise and her prom, and Simone is pushing her. They already have become acquainted with people we made the trip from with Paris with a gentleman and his lady and their little boy, too, who is the same age as Louise. I think they're the only French people on the boat. So we sat at the same table so that we could chat together. Simone was so funny. She was playing with a young English girl who had lent her a doll. My Simone was having a great conversation with her, but the girl did not understand a single word. <laughs> People on board are very nice. Yesterday, they both were running after a gentleman who had given them chocolates. 
There are conflicting and largely unconfirmed reports about racism experienced by the LaRoche family and other non-white passengers on board, but it is certainly feasible that they were the subject of stares, gossip, and even crude remarks from crew members. Nevertheless, their journey across the North Atlantic came to an abrupt end on the night of April 14th. At this point in the voyage, Titanic's wireless operators had received six reports of drifting ice from surrounding steamers, but she continued to travel at full speed. Wow. Around 11.40 p.m., Titanic struck an iceberg 370 miles off the coast of Newfoundland. With only enough lifeboats for about half of its 2,200 passengers, the liner, so famously described as, quote, practically unsinkable, end quote, was ill-prepared for the circumstance, and the closest rescue vessel, Kapathia, was 58 miles away. Passengers were stranded in the middle of the ocean, with temperatures dripping below freezing and safety far off in the distance. According to Juliet's account, a steward woke the family and rushed them about above decks to lifeboats. Juliet spoke no English and was generally confused about what was happening. She followed her husband to the boat deck. Sometime after midnight, crew members were given the order to load women and children first. In the subsequent chaos, Joseph bid farewell to his pregnant wife and two daughters as they boarded lifeboat 14 and promised that they'd be reunited in New York. Joseph was never seen again. Little is known about his final moments. The Titanic sank just after 2 a.m. on the morning of April 15th. Roughly 1,500 people were thrown into the icy waters beneath them as the ship broke in two and began its final descent to the ocean floor. Juliet and her children were rescued, along with 700 other survivors, by the Cunard Liner Kapathia several hours later. When they arrived in New York days later, they were met with crowds and reporters. They searched the masses in hopes that Joseph might have been rescued by another ship. Their efforts were in vain. Mr. LaRoche's body was never recovered. The next several years proved to be tragic for the LaRoche family. Juliet returned to France with her daughters in grief. Later that year, Joseph's uncle, President Leconte, was assassinated when an explosion destroyed the Haitian National Palace just four months after the Titanic sank. Juliet gave birth to a son in December of 1912, who she named after his father, Joseph Jr. He died in 1987. Louise, the last remaining child and the last French survivor of the sinking, died in 1998. The story of the LaRoche family is unique, but the erasure of their existence is all too familiar. The LaRoches weren't, on, weren't the only passengers of color on Titanic, but every mainstream effort to revisit the doomed ship's past has, include, has excluded uh, stories like theirs and others. For many years, many thought the people of color were barred from sailing on the Titanic. Urban legends and tales from folklore added fuel to these theories, even compelling renowned poet Langston Hughes to note in a 1953 Chicago Defender article that as a child, he, quote, remembered the old folks talking about, about it and how, thank God, there were no Negroes on that ship. It wasn't until 1995 when a French member of the Titanic Historical Society, or THS, as it's normally referred to, interviewed Louise LaRoche that the, remar the remarkable story of the only black family on the Titanic was first shared with the general public. In the 25 years since, the LaRoches have only been the subject of a few plays and a handful of articles. They haven't been afforded the same kind of fame or name recognition as, other, as their white counterparts. Hmm. Well, you know... I, I've never heard of any any anyone be getting you know kind of famous from it or whatever. I mean, this happened so long ago. I mean, the people they were interviewing like really old, you know. So I mean, I don't know, but I guess that's his perspective. Um, so Joseph Felipe La Marcia La Roche and his family were passengers on the world's most famous ship, and the story did not end in the icy depths of the North Atlantic Ocean that fateful night in 1912. Their time in the spotlight is long overdue. And uh, that's that, man. I just want to give this, this this brother some shine, some props. Um, one thing about the, I'm reading about the article and it's saying that they weren't the only people of color. Well, I mean, they they if they considered you know all of skinned Italians people of color, I guess you know I, I get it. But from every article I've seen about about him, he was the only black man like on the Titanic. So 
Um, that was a little conflicting at first. I was like, what do you, what do they mean? You know, he, he was the only player of color and this and that. that, that's what I think they're talking about. I, you know, cause, uh, judging by what, uh, the last article said, they consider darker skinned Italians are people of color. So, but in terms of people of color, that look like, you know, me and you, the Mr. LaRoche was clearly, um, clearly he was a Negro, but he just was a different kind of Negro, if you will. You know, he's, you know, he's from Haiti, you know, and everything like that. But I mean, of course, you know, Israelites are all over, man, you know that. Um, I look at him, I mean, it's, it's 50, 50 chance that brother was an Israelite, you know? So, you know, I wanted to give them some shine. And also I wanted to address this too, because apparently there was a, a rumor came out back in like 2016. Um, supposedly someone put something out that there was a black woman on the Titanic named Melinda Borden who died because lifeboats were only for white women and children. And that has been totally debunked. And the person who posted it will not grant any, any type of, interviews to see where he got that information and you know fact check them or fact check them or whatever and so but you know how the internet is man you could just say you could put up a meme and say anything and people will run with it i mean it's just a sign of the times man you know i mean people will just i mean you'll you be surprised maybe you won't people could just post something and how many people just actually just, just just believe it just because someone posted it like that's scary that is just scary, but that's, that's the, that's, you know, that's the kind of the world we living in now, man. But, um, yeah, that, 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 that rumor about some black woman dying, or was, um, you know, was the bump. Someone just put that out there or whatever. It wasn't, there was no validation, no source or where they got the, where they got the information from or nothing. So y'all know I'm real big on, on sources or whatever. So, but anyway, um, let me, yeah, I'm gonna put some pictures up of, uh, uh, what the daughters look like and everything like that now or, or, or what they look like back in 1974 when a, a picture was taken of them and um yeah man you know i just wanted to give the brother some shine you know he didn't make it and he didn't you know he uh saved his family that was his family you know and um you know he told him he would meet them in new york and he, they never saw him again man so you know maybe the most High have mercy on his eternal soul you know so anyway i hope y'all um you know enjoyed the the, the um the lesson and, um, you know, until next time, it's Dr. Ephraim signing off, saying Shalom, elect.